are very grateful that His Worship the Mayor of Toronto has found time to make his third annual visit to our show tonight. John Tory was elected Mayor of Toronto in November of 2014 and took office on December 1st that year, thereby ending the frenzied four-year Rob Ford era at City Hall. Mayor Tory won that election in part because of his own fine reputation, but also because of his smart track proposal for an overhaul of our public transit system. Mr. Mayor, thanks so much, as always, for yes, joining welcome. us again. <laughs> and two years in, let's ask the general question first. Two years into your mandate, what kind of high school grade would you give your performance so far? Oh, I've learned over the years not to grade myself. Uh, that's for the public to do. And uh, I think that I'm uh, you know, on track with the things I said I would do. Traffic and transit, keeping taxes low, uh, working on jobs and investment, housing, and working well with the other governments because we had stopped collaborating with the other governments and the council was a bit of a mess uh, in previous years. So I think on those things we're making progress, but it'll be up to the public to give me a grade if they want to do so. Right. And that'll happen in two more years. It will yes, indeed. it will. Yeah. And uh, well, as you say, you've made progress on many fronts but are, are there any things that have surprised you perhaps that you thought might have happened that didn't yet or and it's not so much that it's actually you know as you know both you, you both know that in this job you sort of show up to work in the morning and there are issues that uh, confront you that morning that you hadn't known about the day before there could um, be a surprise every day yes and there are issues that have sort of uh, confronted me and my colleagues over the last two years that I, I didn't expect would be as big and time-consuming so uber and taxis for example yeah. I mean it's a big issue that affects a lot of people in Toronto, hundreds of thousands of people, and, I, and we've now settled it in such a way that the world, the people from around the world are coming here to say, well, you didn't have to throw them out, you didn't have to have a pitch battle, there was a, there was a skirmish, um, but you found a way to have everybody coexist in a competitive environment where it's a level playing field. That's one example. Um, and the labor contracts, I mean, again, you know labor contracts are coming up, uh, but you can't really anticipate how they're going to unfold, and I'm pleased to say we had two historic contracts that actually got some gains for the public in terms of uh, some of these uh, jobs for life, job security provisions, but without a strike. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a fair deal, 1.25% uh, wage increases. So there are things that you don't necessarily sort of have yeah. on your list of things you ran on, but you have to deal with because that's uh, what you're confronted by and uh, you just come into office every day and uh, come into your office and do your best. Right. Well, let me ask the question a slightly different way then. Is there anything that has disappointed you where you thought you had a win but it eluded you? No. I mean, no, no, I don't think so, but I, I am disappointed in the pace at which government works. I mean, because I come in in the morning and I work for Ted Rogers. So, I mean, if you want to talk about the definition of impatience, um, and, you know, that's because he was a successful entrepreneur. And so I'm used to the speed at which business operates. And even the nonprofit sector, where you take decisions because you have to, a government moves slowly, sometimes because it has to. Um, and that's frustrating because on things like traffic and, and other issues like that, you'd like to move more quickly to do things. Uh, also, the projects that happen in the public sector transit projects take years to build and that's not because people are deliberately going slow it's just because they're so big um, you know that it takes a long time I mean that's something like the Eglinton Crosstown transit line I mean you go underground now and you see the tunnels are there. You'd say, well, why can't there be a train running along here? But then they say, well, we have to do the wiring and the electronics and test the trains and this and that, and it takes a long time. And so um, that's frustrating, pace, but you yeah. just learn to deal with it. Let's yeah. talk about your transit plans, sure. which were very ambitious yep. uh, when you came in. You envisioned 22 new station stops, five interchanges with the TTC, and a line that basically runs from Markham all the way to Pearson Airport. Uh, the line would be built in seven years, starting service in 2021, but there have been a number of revisions since you mm -hmm. came into, into office. Tell us where do things stand now and when can we expect the smart track to be completed? Well, there will be a transit connection that will exist between Markham and Mississauga, uh, and including the Pearson Airport, and that will get done. Uh, it will be slightly different in that it will contain uh, a, an LRT in the western part instead of heavy rail because, one, all the facts were in. Uh, it just proved to be uh, insurmountable, the cost and some of the technical impediments to do it the way that I had originally planned without yeah. the benefit of all the experts that help now. It's going to have a number of new stations inside the city 
of Toronto. Let's remember what the idea of this was. It is to take GO train tracks that exist in the city of Toronto that by and large are used to ferry people in and out of the city from Barrie and Georgetown and, and Stouffville and so on and start to use those tracks inside the city so you can get on inside 416 and ride it say to Union Station or to uh, Weston and get off uh, much like a subway on the surface yeah. and that will still exist. The new stations are going to be put out for a proposal to build them uh, coming in the winter. Uh, the double tracking that's necessary of the train tracks in northeast Scarborough is under construction now. So remarkably for something that was conceived of uh, less than three years ago, these things are actually happening and this train service is going to be available to people within a few years. Uh, but again, there's time frames that are involved in all the different things, including with the province on electrification and so on. Right. So it won't be 2021 necessarily. Well, I, I can't tell you. Well, it, it's still on time yeah. table to get done as quickly as possible and I'm helped by the fact the province is very ambitious about wanting to get its regional express rail on which Smart Track is built yes. um, it done as well. So we're working as fast as we can and I'm thrilled at the fact we're moving this forward step by step including at the City Council. Sure. Let, let's talk now about the Gardner Expressway, the roadway that everyone uses and nobody likes. That's right and yeah. nobody wants to pay for it. And nobody yeah. wants to pay right. for it and we'll ask about right. that too. But you persuaded Council to build, rebuild the eastern end of that as opposed to the other options that were being looked at. Uh, but even before the project had begun the price tag had jumped quite considerably from 468 million to 1.4 billion. So any rethinking on that on your part? Well, first or you of all you have to make sure you use an apples to apples comparison okay, of well, present value that, numbers. Then? Well it's gone up by a couple hundred million dollars, several hundred million dollars, but uh, here's the real bottom line. I mean, what the Gardner had to be rebuilt anyway or taken down because it is the, at the end of its useful life, and that's both east and west of Young Street. East of Young Street, there was a proposal to take it down and have, in effect, the parkway would come to an end at the south end and the Gardner would come to an end at the east end, and there'd be kind of a boulevard connecting the two. Uh, I felt, as did a majority of the city council, that you needed to have an express ring road connection around the city to allow people to move around the city without going inside the city. Uh, and so that was carried by the city council. The one difference between my administration and previous ones is that instead of having the price escalations happen in the middle of the project when it's under construction and suddenly people are confronted by the notion that the price has doubled or gone up by 40 percent, we are doing the homework at the beginning. And so yes, there has been an increase in the so price over what was originally contemplated, yes. And the western part of the Gardner, west of Young Street, <coughs> nobody argues about that. It has to be rebuilt because it's at the end of its life. And both of these in total are going to cost billions of dollars, billions. Yeah. And no matter which route you'd chosen, no matter whether you left it up or took it down, even taking it down was going to cost several hundred million dollars. So I have come forward with the, the proposal that simply says we've got to be honest with the public between the cost of the roads and the transit we need to fix traffic in this city that we have to pay for it. For years the City Council had been just approving projects and putting them on a list of unfunded projects. And that's a sort of like a fraud on the public where you're sort of saying, well yes, it's on the list, but there's no way of paying for it, so it never gets built. Yeah. And uh, when we open the York University Spadina subway a year from now, uh, it will be the first new transit stations opened in Toronto in 14 years. And that's not acceptable. So we're moving forward to say we're going to do these projects, we're going to be honest about them, we're going to be honest about the need to pay for them, and that'll provoke uh, quite a debate as it already has, and yes. that's fine. John, another controversial subject uh, uh, in the area of transit is the Scarborough subway extension, mm -hmm. uh, which calls for a one-stop line that would cost $3.2 billion. These costs are just staggering, but yeah, they are what are they are. Um, as opposed to, though, a light rapid transit line, which would include seven stops, which presumably would be more convenient to passengers and residents in those areas. You've stubbornly stuck to your guns on this issue yes. all the way through. If any politician could get away with changing his mind, it's you, I would think, because of the goodwill that you have as a reasonable thinker, but you're still very much in favor of this one-stop extension. I have shown, you know, where the facts were put in front of me, say on the western end of Smart Track, which we discussed a moment ago, that I am willing to, uh, to, uh, to modify my position. But with respect to the Scarborough subway, I believe that what we're talking about here is the extension of an existing subway line. Mm -hmm. And the notion to me that we would not extend that subway in a subway form to the Scarborough Town Centre, which will bring with it jobs and development that will happen there because the transit goes there, uh, to me is, is just not uh, sensible. And, and, and furthermore, I think 20 years from now, we'll be talking about a 
further extension of that same subway even further north and east into Scarborough. Uh, and so it's an extension of the existing subway line. It's been contemplated for 40 years but not done. And it's expensive. I, I, I agree with that and I admit that. I mean, it is expensive to build subways. We're also going to build an LRT to the U of T Scarborough campus that is going to have several stops through priority neighborhoods and so on and will provide that kind of local service you're talking about. But the heavy order transit in the form of a subway will serve many, many people that will go from the Scarborough Town Centre as the kind of the hub of development in Scarborough and allow them to travel downtown on one continuous subway as opposed to getting on and off various vehicles. Sure. Now, we're going to come to the inevitable topic of road tolls, sure. which you announced a few weeks ago, surprising a lot of people by coming out in favor of them when previously um, in electoral times uh, and, and before you became mayor, you referred to this as highway robbery. Mm -hmm. So give us your version, the Coles Notes version, of what uh, changed your mind and why this is such an important um, initiative for Well, Toronto I referred to roads. part one of the Coles Notes, which mm -hmm. is that we had this list of $33 billion accu accumulated over over various councils and mayors of projects that the City Council had proudly approved and not provided any money for. So they weren't getting built. The relief line, subway line, the waterfront LRT, uh, fixing the mouth of the Don so we can develop the port lands and on it goes, the, the fixing up the Gardner Expressway. Yeah. So that list sat there and it had sat there through council after council and people just saying, well, we have no money. I don't think that's appropriate to build a great city, nor is it honest. And so I went through a choice as to how we could say to the public, look, in our view, this is the best way to pay. I had three choices. Choice number one, massively increase property taxes, like by double digits. And I don't think people will accept that. Older people trying to stay in their homes, younger people trying to stretch to be in a home, and so on. Choice number two, sell assets, like Toronto Hydro. I didn't think that was the right way to go either. So we were faced with a third choice, which is to find a way to raise money through other means. And there were a variety of options in front of me. And while I had expressed some concern in the past about road tolls, I was taken by the fact that this uh, implements a principle of user pay to some extent, which I'm not opposed to. And furthermore, that 40% of those users actually live outside of the City of Toronto and make no contribution presently to the cost of billions of dollars of keeping this road repaired and, and in fact rebuilt. And so I came to the conclusion that a modest toll put on these two roads will raise the money to build the transit and fix traffic and to me that is something we must do. That is one thing that to me is non-debatable. Build transit and fix traffic are two things this city must do, and in order to do it, you have to pay for it. Right. So that's the Coles notes. Okay. How will the tolls actually get implemented? What will the process be? Will there be toll booths on the highways? And how? Well, and what will the cost funny you of ask the that infrastructure question, be? Because you know, some people say, well, we'd actually be better off if you did have to. Remember, people from the old days in the U.S. and so on will remember you actually threw coins into a mm -hmm. basket, yeah. mm -hmm. and they said, well, if people were just throwing a, a toonie into the basket every day, they might find it, you know, actually more painless, much as they do when they go and buy a coffee at, at Tim Hortons. But uh, all those questions are being referred to the staff. Obviously we have very advanced technology yeah, today and like I want the most advanced yeah. technology. Yeah. I want them to answer all the questions that have been posed and just so the viewers know we're thinking about them. Dynamic pricing which says for example you pay less if you drive at 6 a.m. than if you drive at 8 a.m. Uh, or maybe you pay less on weekends and the, all this kind of thing. So those are all questions that will be answered. Flat rate versus uh, versus distance travel. Yeah. Trying to make this seem. Yes, yeah, so we're yeah. going to get a report and, and it will come back with the recommendations and then we'll see where we go. Well, um, many people fear that um, in order to avoid paying tolls, uh, drivers will flood the arterial roads and then you'll end up with more traffic on uh, the other streets. Now, how, do you, uh, how do you manage all the traffic flow um, so that one innovation doesn't end up blocking traffic and making other problems in other areas? Yeah, it's a valid question that comes up and I'll point out first of all that Toronto will mm -hmm. not be, if we implement tolls, the first city in the world to implement them sure. and in most places where they've done it and pretty well all, they have found ways to manage the traffic and what they've also found of course is that as we hope is the case a lot of people uh, decide to leave their cars at home and take transit and there will be expanded go train service coming on stream just as the tolls are likely to be implemented in a couple of years uh, and then the other thing we'll do is use traffic management I mean we have ways to sort of direct traffic uh, on and off different route roads and uh, use speed limits to uh, to manage traffic and so we'll do that uh, but I'm optimistic that just as other cities have coped with this so can uh, the greater Toronto area and that we'll end up with a lot of transit traffic will be much better and we'll have paid for it and 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 that's something that has been a big ob obstacle until now is we just wouldn't pay and we right. couldn't pay and said we shouldn't pay and there's no free transit that's it that's an absolute reality yeah there's no free anything <laughs> let's change the subject you've sure. recently announced a, an audacious proposal to build a park an eight and a half hectare park 
over the rail corridor just west of the CN Tower. It's a great idea. I don't think anybody would be opposed to it, but one questions the cost of doing something like that when you've mentioned how all these infrastructure issues are costing billions and billions of dollars that keep getting put off. How do you justify building a park? Well, you justify it. Justify it before you get to how to pay for it. You justify it on the basis that, first of all, um, we're going to create a park here that is going to be used by people from across uh, the city and by tourists. It'll be something as iconic as Central Park, although smaller. That's the idea. It's an excellent park. Secondly, it is going to be built in one of the most parks deficient areas of the city. We've managed to find city councils previous to me found the time to approve dozens and dozens and dozens of condo towers without thinking about the fact that those people don't have a backyard and a front yard and they need a place to be outside just like everybody else. And so the park is, is a necessity and will be a great uh, ornament uh, to the city, a, a positive factor. The paying for it part, uh, it, it, the, the money for the tolls will go to transit and transportation. But we will find money in the city's capital budget to build this and I hope we can attract a significant private sector contribution as was the case for example with Millennium Park in Chicago as is the case today with Central Park in New York where the private sector steps up and as a civic gesture uh, pays a huge amount of the cost of those parks so I'm hopeful we can do that but we're gonna we've got, again we've asked for a report on it and we'll see how we do okay well we have we have very little time left yes. one final question yes. you've been in this job now two years working seven days a week working harder than probably yeah. any mayor or anyone I've ever seen are you enjoying it? Is it taking a toll in any way? Or are you still well, happy? Well, I mean, with these jobs, the one toll it takes is on your personal life because right. you work seven days a week, and I, I happen to work a long day, and so it leaves less time for my wife and for my children and grandchildren, but we're dealing with that, and <coughs> uh, we will just carry on and make, make sure we have a balanced life. Great. Well, it's wonderful to have you on today. It sure is. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, uh, always. Yeah. And we'll be back with more Toronto Files after this short break.